Y'all ready? For some freedom loving, country living, self reliant, Americans in action. Rob and Cherry know just what you're looking for. They got cooking, living, installation, and so much more. He'll be coming down the mountain, won't he? This fella ain't no phony. You can know what he knows, one video at a time. Range around, country living. Range around, country living. Range around, country living. Hello, everyone. This is Ranger Rob, and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Podcast. This is a experiment <laughs> because, uh, first of all, I don't know if I can see it, but if you ever heard of the internet called Gotwe, which is based on, uh, I don't know if I can get the thing to reach here. Let's see. Watch, it'll be a little bit short. I don't know if I can get it in the screen. Let's say this. <laughs> the floppy ears is a piece of crap. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm back. So uh, let me get my comment thing on here. Make sure you say hello. Uh, if you're on Facebook, sometimes we don't see the comments. The best place to do comments is YouTube. But uh, I only think that's true. It may not be true. Try it anyway. Anyway, so that piece of garbage is what I use for live streaming because I also have really good internet using Starlink, which is super, super fast. Hi, Tanya. Oh, from Away Farms. Uh, welcome. So anyway, I never know if it's going to be working, uh, this Got We thing. And if I use Starlink, Starlink is a satellite system and it's awesome. It's very fast, works great for everything except live shows like Zoom. Um, of course, this we're using... Um, StreamYard. Um, anyway, it'll, because it's a pulsating signal, sometimes you'll freeze up, but uh, it's high. I mean, it's very fast. Um, so Starlink is our preferred internet. But when I do a live show, I've got to use the Gotwe thing, which is a cell phone related thing. And it's, uh, well, let's put it this way. If we make it through this show without real problems, I hope the quality is okay. Uh, then we've discovered the best way to do it is my cell phone has a hotspot in it. So I decided to do this show on my hotspot. Um, I, I use Sprint and uh, I have like 10 gigs. <laughs> Hopefully it's enough for this show. Anyway, if this works fine through the whole thing, then I'm going to finally cancel that got we thing. It's uh, uh, I think there's another name for it, but uh, um, it's, like a hundred bucks a month or more than a hundred dollars a month, but it's usually a rock solid signal. So you can do things like zoom and all that stuff. Anyway, uh, uh, Starlink, I'm paying another hundred for that. So it would be really nice to get rid of that thing and know that I can do my live shows on, uh, on my hotspot. And Tanya says the quality isn't bad, uh, but it's kind of blurred. I figured that might happen. Uh, when you, um, move your head fast, <laughs> <laughs> Ouch, I think I think or I think I'm gonna hurt myself. So yeah, um I was afraid of quality. Uh from my screen everything's clear, but I can't see the output and I'm not turning on anything extra on my computer right now to make sure that all the power goes to this. So thank you, Tanya. I appreciate that. So welcome to Ranger Rob Country Living podcast, which is also uh, available on Spreaker and a bunch of other platforms. And what we do is we take this show when it's over, take the audio off of it, and that's what gets uploaded to our podcast. And our podcasts uh, are weekly. This is episode 11. Um, got kind of odds and ends. Um, you guys probably see our daily videos, so I can probably fill in little gaps of things you may have questions about because we try not to make our videos too long. So you know, a lot of stuff happens in a day and we don't record at all. And uh, so, but uh, the biggest news <laughs> mm -hmm. 
is the Idaho pasture pigs. And uh, I, I guess, you know, if you weren't a homesteader and you weren't in this stuff, it probably go big deals like getting a dog, right? But uh, to us, um, I have never raised pigs before. And on a homestead, um, it seems like a practical thing to do with, you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about shortages and rationing and stuff like that in the future, uh, future of this sh- later in the show. But what's cool about Idaho pasture pigs, one is we're getting three of them. And I'm still learning terminology, but we're getting two um, uh, uh, gilts, which are females that have never had babies. And we're getting one uh, sow, uh, no, sorry, <laughs> boar, <laughs> which is a young, just male pig. And uh, he's going to be our feeder pig. He's the one we're going to butcher in eight months. Because these uh, pigs are going to already be three months old. And uh, you can see me kind of stumble along, along here with all the terminology. But um, the reason we did that is like, okay, well, I'm getting two breeder pigs, which are Idaho pasture pigs, which are registered. Now, the feeder won't be registered because we're not playing on breeding them. And he's been fixed anyway. Um, so we're going to just get them to a good old size probably in April or so and go have them be an addition to our freezer. And I've never gone through that process before, so he'll be great to learn the process with. Um, and then uh, we I think we already have someone set up already to uh, – <laughs> pigs are better than dogs. I'll read the rest of that in a minute. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, we already have a boar set up to breed – um, our females, uh, which won't be for another five or six months. So uh, then I got to kind of go through the process of how to deal with um, furling pigs. So, yeah. Um, Tanya is saying um, pigs are better than dogs. In fact, let me put this on the screen. Um, in my opinion, sometimes laugh out loud. <laughs> we have a house. How, you have a house pig? Um, we have a house pig free who gets free range outside and uh, and inside, uh, whatever he feels like, we raise. How do you say that? Jul- Juliana, Jul- 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 Julini pigs. Is that right? I've never heard of them, but that's cool. Are they just the little guys? Um, yeah, I don't know if I I could do that. I think I have a lot of paradigms in my head, so I can't bring the pigs in the house. But <laughs> that might change. <laughs> Um, so the reason we picked Idaho pasture pigs is one is they're kind of a new breed. Uh, they were started in 2006 in Idaho, um, and they're pretty uh, darn good about watching the registered pigs and making sure that you're not cross inbreeding the, the pigs at all. So as soon as we get our pigs, we'll register with the Idaho pasture pig website um, as a registered um, a breeder. And we are, uh, we have to keep track of who we're breeding one with, and we already uh, we already know that the boar that we have picked out is not related to the two females that we have that are coming this Saturday. So the thing is, also there's kind of like a little bit of money involved in making uh, in selling pigs that are Idaho pasture pigs, because typically, like uh, uh, Idaho pasture pigs tend to be fifty to hundred dollars more expensive than regular pigs uh, because of their um, watching the breeds and all that stuff. Um, I don't remember all the different names of the different three types of pigs that are in this, in the Idaho pasture pigs, but um, one pertains to really friendly. Another is uh, it, they're considered a good meat pig. And the other is they're, they're not going to be a giant pig. They're only going to get the, 200, 250 pounds. Uh, boars could push that a little bit. Anyway, but um, so it just seemed like a um, every Idaho pasture pig that we have gone visited. We did go over to Western Washington and looked at some, and then we looked at uh, some here in uh, Redmond, Oregon, and we made our decision to go ahead and purchase locally because, first of all, we really like the people, too. They were ready to go. The other ones uh, we're going to have uh, baby uh, piglets till uh, February, and we're kind of ready. Like, let's let's do this. Once we make our mind up, we're like, woo. Uh, so anyway, so we'll get our new pigs this 
um, Saturday, <laughs> which obviously kind of like, oh my gosh, we got things to do. So during this week, if you start watching our videos, uh, you know, we do daily vlog videos. Um, we just got our Premier One uh, fencing in. Um, so we're kind of learning how to use that. But um, at the same time that this is all going on, I'm building a new sh uh, shelter for the new pigs, uh, which is almost done. And I don't know where my videos are. We're kind of a couple of videos ahead. So I think you'll start seeing the shelter um, in the next video or two. Um, at the same time, we got this two and a half acres of undeveloped property that we want to start developing. So we're going to use permaculture um, ideas. Um, to help develop that property back there. So as a test, we cleared out, well, I don't know, maybe 150 by 300, 200 feet of land and got all this um, uh, sage out of it. And uh, we wanted to turn up the ground too. And we added um, um, cover grass to it. And so uh, we went over to Culver in Oregon here. Uh, was told about a couple of things that work great for fall and winter um, cover crops uh, to start getting that involved because the the, the the dirt and we have the soil we have is is like a sand. Um, luckily, we have uh, really good land. We're not rocky at all, so we have a lot of soil, but it's high desert soil. <laughs> so. Anyway, it's not good, so it needs to be amended. So what we're doing first is turning it up, adding seed, trying to get some things growing in it, and then eventually, if we can get some, get a little bit of growing in there, our pigs, since we're using the P Premier One mobile netting, uh, we're going to be moving the pigs around in different places on that two and a half acres to help turn up the, the, the ground and then add seed, and then put um, mulch over the top of that, move the pigs, and or sometimes we may just put hay, uh, hay over the top of it, and keep adding to the soil and keep rotating the pigs. Hopefully one of those paddocks will start growing, and as time goes on, those pigs will end up back there again. Now, the other thing we're working on, but I'm not there yet, is to make a, a chicken tractor, and What's going to happen is the chickens I have now that are laying all these eggs we get are going to get their wings clipped. And I'm going to retire them soon and bring in some new Rhode Island Reds to replace them. And move those guys, since they're kind of our first chickens or kind of like our buds, we're not going to butcher them right away. So uh, we don't want to butcher them. So we want to turn them into pasture chickens so they can come in and help develop the property and, and you know add their wonderful poop to it and the, along with the pigs, churn it up, add cover crop and start getting this land to start growing stuff um, and, and start developing it. And so we're going to do that with our pigs and hopefully our chickens and whatever else we might get in the future. But anyway, that's the plan so far. So Idaho pasture pigs are coming this Saturday. We're kind of excited because I've never done it before. We've been studying like crazy. So we're experts on YouTube, <laughs> but physically actually handling and, and doing it myself, never. So that's what our channel's all about is guys. Um, we're not totally new at everything that we're doing, but some of the stuff, um, if you're not familiar with it, you might be a little scared. You never raised an animal before. All I can say is study like crazy, use YouTube, Use all the things out there, get some books, and dive in. And just don't procrastinate because I think we're running out of time as far as procrastination. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, the other thing I wanted to also mention, by the way, once again, if you're trying to comment to us and you're not on YouTube, um, uh, we may not see your comments. So the best place, if you want to get involved in any conversations, is to maybe shoot over to the YouTube channel on Ranger Rob Country Living and uh, uh, get on the chat there. Uh, this is a brand new podcast. This is a brand new live chat. So we don't have a big uh, following. I wish we did. Um, it takes time to build that up. I got to be on a regular schedule 
and we're trying our best to stay on Wednesdays. At, um, we did start at five, but I moved it to six, thinking that might be a little bit better for folks to come join us. And I just, I wish I was cuter. That's all I can say, because um, I know we have great content. I just got to find a way to get discovered, I guess. But And if there's anything we can do better, anything we, we can improve, things that you like us to do, uh, we're always open to those things. We're not set in our ways. And uh, maybe when I get more relaxed, I'll do a rum and coke or something. So uh, Tanya, you're saying pig feed uh, facts. Hog, night, hog 19 is, uh, what is hog 19, by the way, uh, is only $12. Oh, okay, 19. In fact, I just bought, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> you got to deal with me. I got uh, hog 19. I bought um, two bags right now of 40-pound uh, bags, about 12 bucks. It's pretty uh, much the same as chicken feed. We get about 2% less calcium. So I just get hog 19 for all our animals and give my chickens. Oh, you give it to your chickens too. Um, the shells um, powdered up. Yeah, we do the same thing. Sherry, for the first time, took a whole bunch of, because we process 48 eggs a week for our freeze dryer. So instead of putting them straight into the compost pile, uh, she decided to go ahead and bake them and, and, and dry them out and then threw them in the little blender. You know, I made like <laughs> three quarters of a cup of powder. Anyway, and so we add that powder to our uh, chicken's feed. But I didn't realize that you could do the hog, add a little bit of the hog, 19, into the chicken feed so they get more calcium. Did I get that right? <laughs> um, you said, that, yeah, the hog 19 is a pig feed, which I do, did know that because I went to what I used to be called the feed barn, but I went to the place over here in Redmond, talked to them about what they had, how I could purchase it. And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, yes, uh, so chicken feed is like 20 to $24 a bag. So you're saving so much more. And am I right that you're saying that the pig feed has more calcium, has calcium in it? Is that correct? Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, so funny. So what are we doing to get ready for these Idaho pasture picks? Well, uh, one of the first things that will happen uh, after the weekend is we'll have to get on the website and fill out the form to be a registered pasture pig, which is kind of nice um, uh, breeders. And uh, it's kind of cool because it kind of helps advertise your pigs. Um, if somebody's in Oregon and they don't want to go that far and we happen to have pigs that aren't related to whatever they're doing, um, we'll be on their registration. You just go on there. You go to uh, uh, Oregon. You'll find the people that have registered pasture pigs there, Idaho pasture pig. So uh, registration will be really important. Next thing is um, we're working on the equipment, and we just got a Premier One fencing in. We just got the ch solar charger all charged up. Tomorrow, the next day, Sherry and I are going to kind of play with it. We got two 100-foot um Premier One um, flexible netting, uh, and we're kind of double uh, fenced in this property. So we have a deer fence around our two and a half acres. And uh, so we're going to do the first setup with the pigs inside that area in, in case they escape, because it takes a few days to get them trained to the, to the fencing. They're already trained to electric fencing, but they're trained to a single wire. And we need to kind of have them uh, trained to the Premier One fencing. Um, it is hog fencing. It's like three, 30 inches high. Um, anyway, so in case they escape, we have a secondary fencing in the whole property to uh, keep them from heading down the road. And at our age, we don't want to be chasing pigs down the road. and Because uh, they're like herding cats from what I understand. Um, hog 19 has 2% less calcium than chicken feed. Is that right? Um, so even out, so to even it out, I give the chickens, I give the chickens back their shells in the feed to save more. I think I, 19 has less cal, has less calcium than the chicken feed. Is that right? So 
instead of trying to give hog feed to the chickens, you're giving chicken feeds to the hog so they get more calcium. Did I follow that right? <laughs> Just remember, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to learn this stuff. <laughs> so I, I, I think I followed you right. So instead, I, the other way around, add a little bit of the chicken feed to the hogs. Is that right? Hog feed to the chickens. But you said add 2% less calcium. Hog 19 has 2% less calcium. So to even it out, give chickens back their shells. You see where I'm going? <laughs> it's, it's me. I'm sure of it. So what, um, I'll keep going here as we determine what Tanya's trying to teach me, which I'm sure it's very educational. I'm just slow. Uh, so, uh, so my other thing I was saying to get ready for the pigs Okay, here we go. You don't need to buy chicken feed at all. Okay, so, oh, okay, so you're giving the chickens, everybody hog feed, but to give, to get more calcium to the chickens, you're giving them, the chickens, the um, powdered eggshells to make up the difference. Correct? <laughs> yeah, so, um, because hog feed's cheaper than chicken feed. Is that correct? I think I got it right. <laughs> I feel so good. <laughs> Tanya's probably over there shaking her head going, boy, this guy is something else. But anyway, I love you, Tanya. You follow our channel. You're great. Thank you so much. Um, what else are we doing? So food. We're kind of working out food. I love what Tanya's telling me about because it could save me a lot of money. Um, the shelter. I am building a little A-frame. It's a ooh, five by eight. Um, pretty simple. Uh, trying to keep it as light as possible because it has to move to each paddock. And uh, Tanya says, "Yes, you got it! <laughs> Yay!" Oh, hold on, Tanya. I gotta. We gotta celebrate this. Um, here. Oh no! Don't do that. Um, yeah. All right, celebration that I actually got what uh, Tanya was trying to t teach me. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. And uh, did we all learn that? <laughs> so to save money, I'll just review it to make sure I got it. The hog feed um, has all the nutrition that chickens need, except it's lower in calcium. So to make up for that difference, Tanya suggests give everyone hog feed and add um, the shells you get from your eggs, dry them out like sherry. She puts them in the oven and just dries them out. Throw them in a little blender, turn it to powder, add it back to the chicken's feed. So the chickens get plenty of calcium, a lot more calcium, and the pigs are just fine. And hog feed is, hog feed 19, they call it 19% here, um, is more affordable than chicken feed here. So if I understand, because I buy the Swanson. Um, so I have to check those prices. I haven't really looked at that very close, but it's getting time that I really watch that stuff. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. In the name of, um, it's called Tanya Faraway Farms. Is that actually your, your, a channel? If so, I want to make sure I'm advertising it. So please visit Tanya at Faraway Farms, and uh, she'll teach you all you need to know about chicken Chicken and dog feed. <laughs> oh, Tanya, thank you so much. So the shelter, we got a frame built. I just got to put the roof on it. I've got everything I need to do. Just got to finish that project up. Um, on the property, um, we're putting them in the grass area first, so they're going to have grass because they're supposed to be pasture pigs in the first place. Um, but uh, we're going to still give them hay. Uh, along with their hog feed. Um, so hopefully it all works out and it will give us a chance to get familiar with the, with the, with the pigs and let the pigs get familiar with us, get used to having them. Uh, Tanya says uh, that they are on uh, Facebook, Far Away Farms, laugh out loud. I got a few videos, but hard to stay on top of it. Yeah, no. Uh, try doing them daily uh, with our, um, oh, you have meat processing classes. Ah, 
Something tells me I need to catch up with Tanya in the future. So, Tanya, thank you so much. Um, so, the property we're getting, uh, um, the, the, the pigs are going to get actually be put on grass right away um, before, we, and hopefully, the stuff we're trying to develop in the outside two and a half acres will have some nutritional value to it uh, before we move them out there and start rota rotating their paddocks in that property. Uh, but it's not going to be a whole lot of grass out there, so they're going to be really depending a lot on the hay that we give them, which we don't mind the wasted hay because it's going to be returned to the soil. So uh, nothing will go to waste, and the more the uh, pigs tromp it into the ground, the better it is for the for the soil. So, uh, and we're also planting cover crop out there. So we did invest some funds into some fall seed um, seeds for that property. Uh, Tanya says, um, you, you got the best fence, uh, hands down for your, you won't have to regret it. So what you don't know, Tanya, is the outside property uh, only has a little bit of fencing around it. So that was one of the things I had in my things. You're making me, I'm, you're doing things out of order here. <laughs> so, so we had a guy come out just two days ago and give me a bid to do a fence after a little bit of negotiations, I gave him a thumbs up. So I don't know when he started, but before the pigs go into the outer part of the property, which they'll be fenced by the Premier One fencing. But if they got out of that, I don't have that whole two and a half acres fenced um, out there. So I, I'm going to get that done because it's kind of nice because when we let the dogs loose, they stay in the general area, but they are going in other people's properties, which are all five acre spots anyway. And they're not hurting anything, but I want to keep my dogs also in the property because that's something I'm avid about being responsible for my dogs. And I don't want to upset anybody. And my dogs don't get in trouble and they don't bark and they don't hurt anything. And they never really go out to the two and a half acres unless I'm out there. Um, but it needs to be fenced and that's going to be my deterrent in case the pigs break out of the premier one fencing. So I don't want to put pigs out there till that fence is done. That will be done probably within the month. So, uh, well, you know, let's just, just give, give money. As long as you give the money out, you can have anything done in your homestead. Ouch. <laughs> so, but yeah, our inner fence is a great fence. Um, our father-in-law built it. it was a, um, he did it. Um, our two and a half acres is fenced by a 10 foot, deer fencing. And the reason he did that is because his wife, Neva, which is the one we care give for, why is my story Zoe seem so long? Anyway, so uh, uh, she was really in the flowers. In fact, she was a um, master gardener. So uh, she did not want deer in, in the property at all. And so uh, uh, she made Jay <laughs> build a deer fence around her precious flowers. And so it's been wonderful because it does definitely keep the fit, uh, the uh, the deer out of here. So, Tanya is also saying, "Yeah, I get what uh, I get what you're saying. Best to be on the safe side, and uh, really hard to get pigs back. Yeah. So, uh, I say they tell me it's equivalent to herding cats. So, uh, we did buy a pig board. If anybody doesn't know what those are, they're lightweight boards that you have handles on it and since pigs see so low to the ground, really, they see people as just two little feet. <laughs> so uh, when you're trying to get pigs to move around, you want to have a board or something solid that's low to the ground. So you take these little four by uh, three by four boards. Uh, well, these these are lightweight. I'm not sure what they're made of, but I ordered one. And it must be pretty good for being 60 bucks. Anyway, which I know I probably paid way too much, but I need to have it soon. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so if you're moving your pigs around in your paddocks or whatever, using a board is the way to do it because it's low to the ground because really pigs' vision is really low to the ground. They're looking at your, your shoes pretty much. So the boards will help direct them when you're trying to push them around to go somewhere. <sighs> so where am I at? So today is, well, first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you to the people who buy, yes, the Ranger Rob poopy bags. Why do I say that? Because I just had to ship out, last week I had to ship out 
some of our, uh, we have three models of poopy bags. We have the sheets, which are my favorite. Um, and they're easy. You take a few out, put them in your back pocket. They come in handy. In fact, I found a dead bird in my yard. So, um, which happens occasionally. Um, instead of the dogs getting a hold of it, I grab a poopy bag out of my back pocket, pick up the bird, seal it up, and throw it away. Um, so, I mean, they're used for all kinds of things that you can clean out a, a litter box, whatever you want with those poopy bags. Anyway, uh, and they're big. They have handles. They smell like lemon. They don't leak. They're, um, well, I developed them because I wanted a better poopy bag. And so Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags, which are on Amazon, uh, you guys have been ordering, and I really appreciate it. In fact, sales have been up, and then with uh, help with some other channels that are um, advertising our poopy bags too, and some radio stations, along with what we're doing, and you guys are our followers, um, the sales of the poopy bags have been great. So I had to ship 50 pounds of poopy bags <laughs> to uh, Amazon today, and I had to send another 36 of another model just the week last week, and... Uh, uh, I'm close to having to actually do something on the third model. So um, so the second model, by the way, is rolls. Um, people says, oh, I love you poopy bags, but it'd really be cool if they're on rolls. So a year later, we developed the Range of Rob poopy bags on rolls, but we did not want them to be smaller, and we didn't. Um, and we wanted the good handles and stuff, so we didn't change the bag at all. Um, however, um, you don't have those little spools like you see at the store. Ours are a little longer uh, or wider um, because we wanted the whole bag. So we we have a third package, which is the rolls with a dispenser that fits our poopy bags. And in the other um, box is just refills. So you can get the Range Rob poopy bags in sheets or in rolls. And if you don't, if you have to have a dispenser, we also sell the Range Rob poopy bags. A uh, one month's worth of bags, along with a little fabric dispenser. It looks really cute. So anyway, check them out. They're on Amazon. And thank you very much for uh, ordering those guys. You guys have really been helping out. And since, uh, and since we came up with that, I guess I should do something. Um, let's do this one. Seriously, when she wakes up, I've got a surprise for her. She better have some Ranger Rob poopy bags. Have a better experience with dog waste bags. Available at Amazon. Yes, it's just that easy. <laughs> Ranger Rob poopy bags. Uh, so yeah, um, that's how we kind of, you know, people all the time are saying, how do you make money on Homestead? Well, you can have a YouTube channel and over time get monetized. And ours has been monetized for a long time. Um, you can have a product, write a book like Justin Rhodes. He's always writing books and trying to get into people's wallets. He's got a membership set of things with, uh, for example, he teaches how to butcher chickens and stuff like that. In order to uh, show the details, which you cannot do on YouTube, he's created a membership site where people can go in and see complete details on butchering techniques and you can see the blood and guts and the techniques for all that um what you can't play in youtube and so that's a lot of us that have questions about butchering and stuff like that um i'm sorry i gotta keep up with my comments uh hey jack um well bar um uh <laughs> you made me lose track uh, so a lot of um, homestead people will start a membership page, make tutorial videos of how to butcher a chicken or butcher a cat, uh, uh, a pig, and maybe the process of quartering it out. And and you just can't play that stuff on YouTube. So um, that's another way they make money by memberships uh, or write books or uh, uh, some people. Of course, along with selling chickens, selling. You know, uh, butchered chickens, selling eggs, selling, uh, you can quarter out or half cuts or anything, um, going what they call co-ops with uh, butchering a cow or, put, or butchering a pig and uh, be, pretty much get the retail rates for your products um, because they're, you know, grass-fed, they're homegrown, they're uh, um, organic, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
you can get top dollar for those things and actually make income for your homestead that way. So we make, you know, we make friends from our, uh, well, podcasts we do really well on. We have more than this, this podcast, but other podcasts too. We do really well on YouTube. Uh, so, so, and, uh, we, uh, got other things in the works, but I haven't mentioned them yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta wait for they come true. And so, uh, yeah, Jack, I'm like cutting up livestock. I just said here, let me put that on the screen. And Jack uh, is after me to uh, name one of my pigs, Mimi, Lulu, and Wilbur. I still think it should be Oink, 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 and Cow. One of these great, I think those are great names. Um, Tanya says, yep, that's what we do. Uh, big game and all poultry. Um, oh, cool. Well, um, if you have any other ideas that you want us to pass along to people that have homesteads, how do you make money on a homestead? There's people doing a lot of clever things. Um, and uh, <laughs> Jack is okay. Hey, I, I haven't written off the Mimi and the Lulu and the Wilbur yet. Um, I got it. It's, it's all up to Sherry. You know that. So, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of people doing some very clever things. One of the things I've ran into twice now are people doing Airbnbs on their property. And you go, gosh, why would people like, I got a cute little five acre place. It's cute. And we got a few more animals here and stuff. But apparently there's people out there that just want the homestead lifestyle for a weekend. And they just want to come out to a place where someone's already got animals, already taking care of stuff. And they actually want to participate when they can. And maybe uh, uh, give them a chance to try the fresh eggs and the fresh pork and things like that and, and give them quite the experience. And, and um, so a lot of people that may have uh, uh, extra housing on their property, um, for us, I've been thinking, I don't know if I can do it or not. I have a fifth wheel that we have parked here that um, we always want to use, but we never have a chance to do it. And when we have guests here, they stay in it. It's beautiful. It's like a high-tech home um and it's a big one too it's a, a montana 36 25 so it's a really comfortable fifth wheel i'm thinking can i airbnb that because uh there's these people like the one person over wilson farm over in oregon he's got a little small place it's a like a cabin um and he they rent it out for over 200 a month and if uh, 200 a day and then uh, if it's for more than three days, it drops down to 149. But they said their book's solid, absolutely solid. Then I watched another guy uh, who their house has a secondary housing in it, and he's renting that out and said their book's solid. I'm thinking, gosh, you know, once we have the pigs here and we get the chickens and next year we have the meat birds and we get the hydroponics and the flower, you know, and what we do, um, and we could use extra help. And uh, by then, we'll have probably one of our pigs uh, butchered so people can have breakfast. Um, you know, we'll give them all the things they want, but they'll have to cook it themselves. Um, give them fresh eggs, give them fresh uh, sausage, and let them enjoy uh, uh, living in a homestead for a weekend. And uh, also, there's a lot of things in Central Oregon to go see. Um, so they may go see, you know, people can go to Mount Bachelor, go see smith rock we've got this beautiful billy chinook we have some really uh this places to go fly fishing there's all kinds of things to do here great hikes all over so uh yeah uh it's an idea and guys are doing it and they're making good money and their book solid just because people they live in the city they want a break maybe they just know they'll never have a chance to do what we're doing and so this is a way to share it and help cover expenses on the homestead uh, Jack was saying that would be the boys and girls getting out of the farm, getting down on the farm. That's right. That was, <laughs> uh, Tanya says, my sister-in-law does a does that in Prineville, and she does amazing. Um, her whole lot is nothing but a garden, and she te uh, teaches and does um, honey there. So she has bees, too, I assume. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's my point. It's like a. If the accommodations like the fifth wheel is totally comfortable, we're talking king size bed, all the amenities. We have 50 amp hookout out there. 
Uh, we have a holding tank because we do have a place on the side of the house to uh, empty our tanks. So we just, when nobody's around, we pull out a big 55 gallon tank. We dump the stuff in there, roll it to the back and then dump it back into our septic. Uh, so no big deal. So people have a restroom. They can take a shower. Um, uh, our, you know, fresh, you know, our water is the best water. Our water here comes from a artesian well. And so we have really good water. So, uh, I mean, it's a great place to stay and it's beautiful. We have lots of, um, anyway, so um, what I don't know is maybe I have to check the ordinances in our area, see if we would be allowed to do that. But I, I always want to make sure we stay within the rules of our area because we're in a place called Crooked River Ranch. So we may not be able to do something like that, but maybe if there's people only coming in temporary for a weekend, uh, there might be um, um, openings in the ordinance around here to do that. So anyway, um, but, you know, cause and effect, you know, if you start doing that, that also means people come in, they use your facilities, you got to do the laundry, clean the thing out again. And and so it causes more work because everything you do on a farm, if you add a pig, you've just created more, more work. If you add a cow, that's more work. If you add hydroponics, more work. So, uh, you know, what are you willing to do? But if you know you're making money from the work you're doing, makes it a little bit easier. So I'm not getting very far in my list here. So uh, fall. So here we are in fall. Everything's dying. Um, everybody's used to seeing my beautiful greenhouse. You go in there and these lush tomatoes and stuff. Well, we got down in the, below the 20s here two days ago. Well, I, I did have a heater in our <laughs> greenhouse, but it's not enough to fight that. And uh, so I got maybe two plants near the heater that survived. The green uh, the tomatoes are wiped out. So it looks pretty sad in there. But I, I'm not surprised. And it's okay because um, we want to, you know, we've been doing jet stars and jet setter tomatoes. And so... We want to change it up. First of all, I've got to try uh, Cherokee purples. They're the most ugliest looking tomato ever, but everybody says they're the best tasting ever. So I'm going to grow one and grow some really ugly tomatoes. Um, then Sherry, um, what we discovered with the Jet Stars, which were delicious, by the way, nice and sweet. But the problem is they're actually too sweet. So when we made our sauces, made our salsas, all of them came out sweet, <laughs> so, uh, which was okay. We don't mind it. And even uh, spaghetti sauce, a little sweeter uh, than you would normally have because they were really sweet tomatoes. So we're going to do uh, at least one wall's worth in the greenhouse of Romas. And then we're going to probably do a, a few more of the uh, uh, big beefs. Um uh, they're, uh, we like a good uh, slicing tomato. We just don't want the sweetness. And we're still going to do some Jet Stars because they're just delicious to eat just by themselves. And they're really good in Pico de Gallo. Um, the sweetness is um, fantastic. And by the way, my dogs are barking and I have the studio door open. And uh, But they don't know what they're barking at. But you may hear. Um, we do, uh, by the way, we do have. So I want. We have security systems on our animals, and so our pigs um, will actually have a security camera so we can kind of make sure, see how they're behaving out there, monitor them, uh, see if they're messing with the fences at all, uh, and see what issues and problems we have. Because we're, we're dealing with a different kind of landscape than a lot of people you see on their YouTube channels. A lot of them are in Northwest or South Carolina or something. They get these green fields and all that stuff. We have high desert dirt, and uh, which can grow grass when, if you take care of it and do and enrich your soil, but it's going to take time. So we cannot find very many channels that have the situation we have where you're dealing with high desert um, and pigs. Um, so um, one of the best ways we can kind of learn as we go is to uh, um, monitor them and learn and find out what these pigs are going to do here in a high desert area and see how they react to the high desert dirt, how we can get them to interact with helping 
um, create uh, permaculture um, is, you know, is it better to do it before they go into a pen or after they leave a pen? Is there a better animal to bring in after they leave, plant, plant the ground, let chickens come in, scratch things around? Um, maybe, well, chickens may not be too smart to put seed in because if I eat all that, but let the different animals, um, and we'll get the appropriate animals that will help with the permaculture for this area. And it may not be the same as how Justin Rhodes would do it or, um, or uh, Salatins and those people. So, yeah, we kind of have to write our own book a little bit. Uh, Tanya was saying, uh, um, can you teach classes on how to do all that? Yeah. <laughs> Fun activity for your wife, salsas and sauces. I don't know if you call it fun because my wife, this is a great subject, Tanya. I really like it. So my wife works nine to five. She's a sweetheart. My wife is amazing. My wife is brilliant, smart, the whole works. But, you know, she works, gets up every morning, gets home at six. She had a year off when her mother passed away. Um, she was on a program where um, uh, the company she left in Arizona um, paid, um, actually laid her off because they're going out of business, but paid her for six months after that, which happened to be the time we came up here. So, uh, we went, um, Sherry was able to work in the homestead full time for almost a year. And, uh, um, and then we, you know, we had some extra proceeds from the sale of the house in Arizona. Uh, so, you know, we went a little bit into our savings while she did that. But a year later, she went back to work at the school district. But, uh, and she's learning canning. She's learning these sauces, learning all this stuff. Did a little bit as a kid with her mom and stuff, but she's good at it and stuff. But her time is so precious. I mean, and she takes care of our books. You know, you got, with our books is our books, the company's books, and her mom's books. And so, because she's the executor of her account, taking care of uh, her mom's uh, uh, estate and paying her bills and stuff. So Sherry you know, sometimes gets really caught up and she's just finished our taxes. And uh, so I think she would like to do that because she even said I'd get more involved in the YouTube stuff if I just had the time and uh, and got more comfortable. And uh, yes, I mean, she, I think she would actually teach something in salsas and and sauces and stuff, but uh, and, but being spread so thin, like tonight, uh, the reason I use Wednesday nights is we also um, uh, our church and 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 um, Redmond uh, has a woman's uh, class. And they're kind of going through uh, right now Revelations or something, and it's just for women. And she's like, I'd like to go that because our neighbor goes there too. So on Wednesday she does that, which I think is great, and she has my full support. But um, it works out great because then when I'm doing a show here, I don't feel like I'm neglecting my wife um, uh, by not being in the same room with her. And I'm, uh, it was a time I did so much commuter, computer work that my we almost got in times where there was a lot of friction in our um, between us because I was working on computers way too much. And so uh, I've really refrained from that a lot. So until I do podcasts. She understands, though. But um, anyway... Uh, what was it? Jack says here, uh, train up your pigs <laughs> while in the art of pork chops. Yes. And Tanya, um, black, white, and they're, uh, and they graze. Oh, okay. That's the name of channel. Black, white, and they graze. That's interesting. On YouTube, she, um, she, uh, she is a, Lep oh, she's in Lapine, largest guard. She's here in the pine with the largest garden I know in central Oregon without being too commercial. I've never heard of her, so I'll go check her out. Uh, Jack, you're saying uh, that sounds like a place to go see. Yeah. And uh, Tanya, uh, I'm sorry. I used to work at Sun River and might know you might know me at Laugh Out Loud at Sage Springs. Believe it or not, as much as I've lived here, I haven't gone to uh, Sun River area that often. I, it's beautiful when I was there, but uh, uh, I just haven't been over there much. So I apologize, but we will cross paths. And also Tanya says, um, think about life 
Think about life. Don't forget to do the things you love. Yes. Um, need to focus on self-healing and joy. Don't ever work your, uh, don't overwork yourself. So yes, um, I've got a lot to say about that. Uh, in fact, today I had a video. You won't see it for about two days. It's called um, uh, From the City to Homesteading. And so I kind of described what my life was like before we came here. So, you know, here I am. I, I got to retire from my aerospace company and I was still doing Internet stuff for fun. I was doing RV Talk Radio and a bunch of other things. I had a radio station. I finally dropped that. Um, but anyway, so I had made extra income through different means. And um, Sherry's still um, working. She's trying to go to at least 62 and a half, maybe up to 65. Uh, there's some reasons financially. They have a 401k special thing through the school district that kind of looks kind of like she might, if she feels like it. I know she doesn't have to um, go to 65, but 62 and a half, which is only two years away for her and her and uh, see. Yeah, two years away. So we have a couple of different options to get Sherry back on the homestead full time. But I don't care what people tell you. You still got responsibilities like um, you got to pay your bills. You got to have health insurance. You've got to have your social, you know, and for people our age, it's going to be social security and a pension and then anything else that you can make extra money on to make ends meet. And then you better have all your ducks in a row before you get to that finish line because, uh, but at the same time, you don't want to work yourself to death and then retire and die. So, uh, um, but I don't, I'll, I'll quote something that Jay used to say, who who uh, was Sherry's dad at this place. He he came from the same company I did, and we both did some of the same thing. Um, so uh, he goes, once he got working on this place and had all the project, he had to set up all these, you know, all these fences and all these flower beds and all that stuff for uh, his, his, uh, his wife and him. Uh, he says, I don't know where I had time to work. <laughs> it's like, when did I have time to work? Because I'm busy all the time. I do believe being busy is important. Um, uh, being active is important because in the video that I have coming out in about two days, I talk about the fact that as soon as I got up here, started working on stuff, this miracle happened, and it's called the scales. And uh, I've uh, dropped at least 25 pounds or more. And not even trying. It's just I'm being more active. I'm doing more work, uh, walking more. I got a lot of property to cover. It's been wonderful. And Sherry's kind of like, er, because she's still doing the nine to five behind a desk and isn't having the same results. Uh, she was doing great the first year she was here before she had to go back to work. But uh, uh, so this has definitely been a good, healthy thing for, for me and for Sherry when she was working here full time. But um, Anyway, she is battling the, the weight issue, and so am I. I mean, so I still got a long ways to go, but I was getting up there a ways, so I'm really happy to see um, that I'm down um, better than I was, but I got a long ways to go. And we're eating a lot better, and I, I've it took me a little while, but about a, two years ago, I kind of like clicked on. is like, I like to cook. I need to take that cooking to another level where I cook every day. Uh, so when Sherry gets home, she doesn't have to go into the kitchen because she did. That's how we're relieved with the Beaver family. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong or indifferent, but I'm, I'm hopefully can say I'm stepping up. I cook the dinners now. So one of my goals is after Sherry and I experimented at being veg vegans, we uh, started to learn to cook a lot better. Well, we we can go through life without meat. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, Sunray, I'm sorry I didn't see you were on there. Uh, Sunray says I live in uh, Crooked River as well. I have um I have hold on here. I lost it. it was, um, <laughs> I was like making sure I read that right. I have crap apple trees. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you know of any other fruit trees that grow out here? Oh, gosh, I'm trying to think of anybody out here that's got anything else. We don't have any fruit trees in here. We have lots of different things growing here. But we, um, Sherry's mother was not in the fruit trees, and Jay didn't want to plant any. 
I guess he just didn't want to deal with the mess. So I'm not sure, but I, I would think that certain types of apples would do good here. Um, and uh, I've heard a lot of, in fact, I saw a couple of posts the other day. Some people had a bunch of pears uh, did well here, but that's all I know about. But I, as I'm just commenting by things I've heard on, on Facebook around the area. Um, Jack says, it sounds like when Sunny and I came, yeah, um, that was back away. Sorry, guys. Uh, City to Homestead. Yes, that is, that is the web, um, that is the new video that I just made coming up in about two days, three days from now, which will kind of tell you what we went through being city slickers. And we kind of volunteered to be city slickers. We were country like this before, but with all the results of everything with Sherry's mother and all that and care, care, we bought this place and ended up in the country again. And we don't really regret it, but it was definitely a shock to go back. Tanya was saying, <laughs> so I can catch up here. Uh, agreed. Taking one day to yourself. Uh, we do on Sundays, we give um, that to God and uh, love for ourselves and family. And Sherry and I are the same way, except we do it on Saturday. Um, no, we're not Jewish. <laughs> anyway, but yes, um, we my, we use technology just to remember when the Sabbath is. So on Friday nights at 6, our, <laughs> our uh, Alexa kind of blurs out it's Sabbath. And so for Saturdays, we tried to take it easy. Um, we still do, you know, some chores around the house, but we uh, take that day to be uh, grateful to our creator. So, uh, yes. Um, so um, we probably should relax even more, but we do the best we can and we're grateful and we use that day. And we only base that on Bible. We don't base it on uh, it's just what's comfortable for me and Sherry. Uh, however, we our church is on Sundays. We'll go to our evening uh, we like to go to the uh, six o'clock in the evening. Um, um, I want to say show. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, I'm running out of time, so I'm trying to talk fast. So anyway, uh, yeah, so we do take the time and we do smell the roses. And that's really important. And we talk about that a lot on our uh, blog. So uh, uh, but pay attention to a couple of videos from now. I think it's two or three videos from now. I'm a little bit ahead. Um, I do that because if I need to take a couple of days off or something, I can stop doing videos because I've been trying to keep this daily video thing going, which is more of a challenge. I think it's just one of those challenges. That it's like, can I, can I pull that off? Um, Tanya also says, uh, I turned that up so the hubby could hear you say you cook, din <laughs> cook dinners. If he's anything like me, he's like, we had the traditional family thing going, but I was really feeling bad and I really do like to cook. And so uh, I made this coolest thing yesterday. I actually took a tortilla, put it in a, uh, I'm running out of time, a pan and you put eggs in it and then cheese and all the stuff. And then you put a tortilla over the top and then you put tomatoes on top of it. So that was the goofiest thing I ever seen. I saw it on YouTube and it was delicious. Oh my gosh, but you gotta be careful not to burn the bottom tortilla because it's, it's weird but anyway but yeah i really enjoy cooking uh jack says uh justin wilson would be proud of you rob yes sir re bob uh brandon hi brandon um sorry i'm trying to get caught up with it um amino acids are essential to oh, to losing weight um try l tyrosine and l why are you using these uh, funny words uh, phenine, is that right? Supplements by uh, the Blue Bonnet brand. Uh, for supplements, guys, I do take some. Um, I've tried some of those other things there, but I really, I really believe in natural things, eating well, getting exercise. And for supplements, I do, uh, I'm doing the vitamin D and zinc thing, of course. And uh, also I do um, um, turmeric, turmeric. Um, because I have diverticulitis, that has really helped me a lot. Um, <laughs> Jack says, I was paraphrasing you. I go, yes, I know. Uh, I know you by now, Jack. And uh, good night, Robin. Cheers. Yes, I got to say good night, too. So, guys, I got to wrap this up. I just hit the 7 o'clock mark, and I got to stay on our time because this 
we syndicate this show. So guys, thank you so much. Sorry I didn't keep up with the chat very well. I was kind of jumping between other notes, but thank you very much. Please take the time to subscribe and uh, uh, say hello in the comments. We really appreciate it. So guys, thank you very much. And uh, we got to sneak away. So thanks again. Bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.